now. We are singing, tracking the talker, sitting nice and tall, hands in our lap, voices up. Thank you. Here's what we're doing in our music class today. Middle Academy scholars will be able to move to music, discover the secret word of the day, review a lot of stuff, orchestral instruments, elements of music, and the life of a composer, and then we will listen to and analyze music. So those are our goals for the day. The first thing that we're going to do today is move to music. So I have this, my dancing scarf is what I like to call it. Um, it's just a clear piece of fabric that I have. We'll use these a lot more when we're in person on campus learning together. Um, so what I'd like you to do is find something similar to this um, and then maybe keep it handy for future videos because we're gonna be doing this a lot. Uh, maybe you don't have a scarf that's exactly like this, but maybe you have just a fashion scarf that you or a member of your family in your household wears. Maybe you have a winter scarf you wanna grab. You could also grab maybe like a dish towel from the kitchen or a little hand towel from the bathroom. Uh, if you don't have anything like this, that's okay. You can just use your hand and pretend like it's a piece of fabric or pretend like it's a scarf. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna play for you a piece of music. The piece of music we're gonna listen to, it's called Walk Through Life. Um, and the recording is made famous by a group called Pink Zebra. Um, and as we listen to the music, your job is to make your scarf match the music. And here's what I mean by that. If you notice that the music is moving very fast, then your scarf is going to move very fast. If you notice that the music is moving kind of slow, then your scarf is going to move kind of slow. If you notice that the music is kind of bouncy, then your scarf will be bouncy. If you notice the music's pretty smooth, and when your scarf moves, it will do so smoothly. Uh, if you notice high sounds, your scarf will be up here. If you notice low sounds, it's down here. Um, so your goal is to make the scarf match the music, and this is really just checking in with yourself to see if you can hear those different elements of music. So we're not going to listen to the whole song because it's, you know, three minutes long. We're just going to listen to maybe the first minute of it or so. Make your scarf match the music. If you're having a hard time, you can just watch me and see what I do. Here we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. notice with my scarf what I was doing um, and hopefully you heard some of the same things so I noticed that the music was not super duper fast but it kind of moved along a little bit I would put that at maybe an allegro tempo so I move my scarf at an allegro tempo walk through life um, I also noticed that the music was pretty bouncy it wasn't really smooth it was not legato calm at all so my scarf was bouncing up and down um, I didn't really know if it was high or low until the voices started. And then I thought, well, that's pre a pretty high voice. I hear some high guitar sounds. So I tried to do it up here rather than down here when I was making the music. Um, so moving to music with dancing scarves, we're gonna do that every now and then uh, for the next few videos we will. So if you have a spot in your home where you watch your videos and do your lessons, maybe just set what you used as a scarf today to the side. If you couldn't find anything, maybe you can find some before the next lesson. Uh, the next thing to do on our list is to figure out our secret word of the day. So that's the next thing that we have. So if I'm looking down at the bottom, I see L blank, R blank, blank. We have three letters we have to fill in to figure out our secret word of the day. So let's do that together. Uh, the first thing I see 
is this note. Is that on a line or in a space? That one's in a space. And if it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. So I start at the bottom and I spell F-A-C-E, face. What letter lines up with the head of the note? F-A-C-E. A. So now I have L-A-R. And I have two letters to figure out. Okay, is this one on a line or in a space? That one's on a line. I can tell it's on a line because the line goes straight through the head of the note. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. The sentence I like to use is every good burger deserves fries. So I start at the bottom. Every good burger deserves fries. Every good burger deserves fries. The letter that matches is the first sound of the word that I say when I hit it. What letter would go under that note? G. Every g, g good. All right, we got one more left to do. Is that one on a line or in a space? If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. Start at the bottom. Spell the word face. F-A-C-E. What letter would go in that last blank? E. To spell large. Our secret word of the day is large. I hope you all get a large amount of candy if you are someone who celebrates Halloween. If you do not celebrate Halloween, well, I hope we all have a large amount of kindness in our lives. I think that would be a wonderful thing. Okay. Uh, today we're going to talk about two new Italian words before we move on to our next activity. Uh, the words are accelerando and ritardando. Um, let me get my guitar up here for a second. Um, okay, so let's look at the first one, accelerando. Next to that word, I just put a very small example of what accelerando might look like if we were to ever see it in an instrumental or a vocal score. Um, so you have notes underneath it. If you notice, both examples of music are exactly the same. The only difference is what's written above. So a lot of times in music, they abbreviate something, just make it shorter. So they just took the first five letters. Excel stands for accelerando. And what accelerando means is that something starts off kind of slow and then gets faster and faster as it goes. So I'm just gonna play my guitar for a second and I'm looking at that and I see that that is E and C. So that's what that would sound like. So an accelerando might sound like this. Started off slow and got faster than what, let me try that again. started off slow, got faster as it went. The bottom one, ritardando, is the exact opposite of that. A ritardando starts off fast and gets slower as it goes. So here's what that one might sound like on my guitar. I'll play that again. Okay, so We've talked before about tempo markings, Largo, Andante, Allegro, Presto. So maybe we have a song that starts off Largo, but then the speed gradually gets faster and we end up at Allegro. That would be an accelerando. Let's say we have a song that starts at Presto and then over time it drops down and we're at Andante by the end of it. That would be a ritardando. Tempos can change all the time in music. You might have an accelerando and then a ritardando right away. Um, but we could start listening to this stuff as we're doing the elements of music and listening to some different things. Um, so those are our two new Italian terms to learn, accelerando and ritardando. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of review. Uh, I remember there was a video a few weeks back where you saw me at my home and I showed you a whole bunch of instrument. My hallway was a mess after I was done with that. There are five different instrument families that we need to know um, so that we can do all our music study. So percussion. 
That's the first one. It's the biggest family of instruments. Percussion instruments are things like drums, triangles, maracas, anything that you hit or tap or shake to make noise. I'm remembering those tambourines I played for you as well. Next, I had the woodwind family. That was things like flutes, clarinets, oboes, saxophones, bassoons, uh, piccolo was in there, clarinet. Uh, uh, so they were traditionally made out of wood instruments, not so much anymore. Um, and wind, because you use your wind to make the sound. The next is the brass family. The brass family is also a wind instrument. You blow through it to make sound, but they're traditionally made out of metal. That's instruments like the trumpet, the French horn, the trombone, and the tuba. Next is the string family of instruments. That's anything that you pluck or strum to make a sound or use a bow to make a sound. When I think of the string family, usually I think of the violin, viola, cello, or double bass. But also in the string family is the guitar and the sitar and ukulele and mandolin. It's also a very large family. Uh, the last instrument family is the keyboard family. Uh, sometimes people like to stick that in with the percussion family because you do tap it to make sound. The keyboard family would be like the piano, the organ, the accordion, and the harpsichord. Sometimes people like to lump the keyboard family in with the string family because most of them have strings. It kind of depends on the person you talk to. I would personally put it in the percussion family, but that's just me. Sometimes we just keep it completely separate. So those are the five main instrument families, percussion, woodwind, brass, string, and keyboard. That might help you say as we start to listen and you start to maybe pick out some of the sounds of those instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, last week we talked about Ludwig von Beethoven, a famous composer. Today we're going to listen to one of his songs. So before we listen to it, I just thought that we would remember some things about Ludwig von Beethoven. Uh, I wrote, he's a famous composer. He is one of the most famous composers. A lot of times when people talk about composers, they talk about Mozart, they talk about Bach, they talk about Brahms, they talk about Tchaikovsky. Beethoven's always on that list of the big ones. He started playing and writing music when he was very young. He played keyboards like piano and harpsichord. He played violin. He played viola. His dad was his music teacher and taught him from a very young age. He lived most of his life in Vienna, Austria. Uh, he pretty much stayed completely in Europe his entire life. He started to lose his hearing when he was 28 years old, and he wrote a lot of music when he was already deaf, which I think is a wonderful feat for a person with disabilities. Um, and he's awesome. He's my favorite composer. I love Beethoven. I think he's pretty cool. He was also kind of known as being a grump. I don't have that on there. But whenever I see that picture of him in that red ascot, that red scarf, I always think, gosh, he looks grumpy. And he was kind of known as being kind of a grumpy guy. Okay, I'm going to move my face over. Uh, we're going to analyze a piece of music. Pardon me, my face can't be in a normal spot. Um, the song we're going to listen to is called the Eroica Symphony and it was written by Ludwig von Beethoven. Um, now, in our last video where we had to listen to music and analyze it, I asked you five different questions. I'm still asking you the same five questions. We're just going to start to expand our knowledge and use some of the vocabulary words that we've been learning about in music class. So the first question that I asked you last, last time is, is it fast or slow? Now we're just changing that to different words. What is the tempo is the first question I want you to answer. Largo means very slow, a crawling speed. Andante means a walking speed, a moderate pace is what we usually say in music, but I like to think of it as walking speed. Next is allegro, skipping speed. We might say a brisk pace. Allegro, skipping speed, or is it presto, very fast? Sometimes when I do this with scholars, I usually give them a worksheet where they can just circle it. So if you have a sheet of paper, or like I have my whiteboard, and you want to write Largo, Andante, Allegro, presto, and then just circle one when the music starts to play, that would be cool. Number two. What is the pitch? Before I just said, is the music high or low? So at the end I added, is the melody high or low? And I'm remembering that melody means kind of the main tune. If I was singing something, it would be what my voice does. Um, if it's instruments playing, it's kind of like the main thing that strikes your ear, the melody. Is that a high or a low sound? Um, if you know the different instruments of the orchestra and you hear a flute, you can think, oh, the flute is playing the melody, the flute is a high sounding instrument. Or, oh, that sounds like a tuba to me. A tuba is a low-sounding instrument. 
Number three, the question I used to ask you was it, is it smooth or jumpy? Now I'm asking you, what is the articulation? There's three different ones you can choose from right now. Legato, staccato, or marcato. Legato. Sing legato, flowing from note to note. Sing legato, smoothly. Legato is smooth. Staccato. Stuck. Staccato is short and snappy. Staccato is short as notes can be. Short and snappy. Marcato. Marcato is strong with accents. We sing with strength and deep tone. Marcato, very strong. I always think of the first four letters of Marcato, M-A-R-C. Looks like it's going to spell the word march. So I always think, can I march around the room to this song? What is the articulation? Question number four, I used to just ask, is it loud or soft? Now I'm adding in the words, is, what is the dynamic? We're gonna start talking more about dynamics. Is it a loud dynamic or is it a soft dynamic? And then underneath my face, you can't really see, do you hear crescendos or day crescendos? We talked about those last time. Remember, crescendo starts quiet and gets louder. De crescendo starts loud and gets soft. And then number five, what instruments do you hear? You can think of the just five different families of instruments. Percussion, woodwind, brass, strings, and keyboards. Uh, a question I didn't put on here that's kind of related to the tempo is maybe you hear an accelerando or a ritardando. If you wanna challenge yourself to listen to those, you can, but that's kind of new, so I didn't put it on this list. So we're going to listen to this, the Eroica Symphony, um, just in case the music is kind of soft for you. I'm also going to put the link to the song that we're going to listen to in the description below. If you find that the music's really quiet, you can just pause the video, listen to it on your own, and then jump back in. Uh, I'm going to write on my whiteboard the different things that I hear as we listen to the Eroica Symphony by Ludwig van Beethoven. And I want you to use these elements of music to answer and analyze the song as best you can. The song is about five minutes long. We're not going to listen to the whole thing. Maybe three minutes we're going to listen to. So here we go. The Rika Symphony by Ludwig von Beethoven.
about 30 seconds left. Ten seconds. There we go. That was three minutes. Okay, so hopefully you wrote down some thoughts either on a whiteboard or a piece of paper. If you got your phone out and you're just typing notes to yourself, or maybe you're just going to think about them as we go. That's cool, too. All right, question number one, what was the tempo? I wrote that it was Allegro, a skipping suite. Some people might think that was Andante. Mm, it's kind of the fast side for Andante. I would say it was Allegro. What is the pitch? Is the melody high or low? I wrote that the melody is high, and I'll tell you why when I get to question number five, the instruments that I heard playing the melody, I thought were very high instruments. Uh, number three, what is the articulation? I wrote that it was marcato. I could definitely march around the room to that song. Uh, some people might say it was staccato, but if I had to pick one, I would say it was marcato most of the time. What is the dynamic? Is it loud or soft? I wrote it as loud and soft. Lots of crescendos and day crescendos. They were all over the place. There were times when I kind of had to almost tilt my head to hear the sound because it got very, very quiet. Then there were other times where it got very, very loud. Um, so yeah, it's loud and soft. We're going to talk more about dynamics, hopefully very soon. And then what instruments do you hear? I wrote a whole list. Here are the instruments I heard. Flute and oboe had the melody most um, noticeably in my ears. Those are the two instruments I heard. So that's why I said that the melody was high because the flute and the oboe are very highest pitched instruments. I also heard the bassoon in there for a little bit. Uh, the clarinet, I think, played the melody along with the flute and the oboe, but I heard flute and oboe more than the clarinet. I also heard violin, viola, cello, and double bass. The whole string section was in there playing. And then towards the end, when we had about 30 seconds left, the French horn took over the melody for a little bit. Um, so that was pretty cool. But that's the only brass instrument that really hit my ear. There might have been a trumpet in there, but if it was, it was very calm. Um, if the trombone was playing, I didn't really hear it. But French horn really jumped to my ear pretty well. Okay, so we're going to keep working on these analysis activities. We're going to keep working on the elements of music to see if this is stuff that we can start to pick off. If this is kind of tricky for you still, that's okay. Um, you know, this is only the second time that we've done this so far this school year. So if it's challenging for you, don't stress out about it. We're going to get better and better at it as we go. One thing I always like to talk about when it comes to music analysis is I want you to start to notice patterns in what you hear. So if you like this song, you could think, okay, this song was okay. I didn't hate this. And it was at an allegro tempo. That's pretty neat. And then you think, oh, you know what my favorite song is, is Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Um, that's an allegro kind of song too. Maybe I like music that's a little bit faster tempo. Oh, that's interesting. And that might help you discover new music if you just go look at stuff like that. And I know if you listen to songs like on Spotify or if you have Pandora or something, they have that algorithm that helps them recommend new music to you. So if you notice that you like music that, you know, has cellos in it, for example, it might help you just notice the music you like. You have a certain preference, which is pretty cool. Uh, we only have one thing left to do today, and that is to do our train exit. So, everybody, breathe with me. Here we go. All right, thanks for listening to some wonderful music with me. Hope you have a magical, musical day, and I'll see you next time.